So first of all, we're going to go with the greatest common factor or greatest. I think I want to make this smaller, don't I? I can't. Okay. Greatest common factor. So here's an example. 3x plus 6xy. So what value goes into both of these terms, or is a factor of both of these terms. Hopefully you would say that a three is a factor of three, and a three is a factor of six, and x is a factor of x, and x is a factor of x. So three x is a factor of both of these terms. So we can factor out or divide each term by three x, but for this value, this expression to have the same value, or to be equivalent of the expression I'm making, uh, this term will have to be one, and this one would have to be two y. So in other words, um, 3x times 1 is 3x. 3x times 2y is 6xy. So when I multiply this or distribute this, it will become that. All right, and so this blown up factor is really not working that well. Um, another example, so we'll go over here. Another example is, uh, change colors. Let's go 9y to the fifth minus 3y cubed plus 3y squared. And so what is a factor of each of these three terms? And if you don't get the greatest one straight away, you can factor again and multiply the two factors that you divided out or factored out. Um, you should hit pause, try to do it on your own, and see if your answer matches up. Okay, so hopefully we're back and you paused. Um, 3 goes into each of these coefficients, and y squared goes into, into each of these uh, variable portions of each term. So I'm going to factor out a 3y squared. So what does that leave us for this term? It leaves us 3, because 3 times 3 is going to be 9, and y cubed, because y squared times y cubed is y to the fifth. How does that leave, what does that leave for the second term? It's going to leave us a negative. The 3 goes out and then it leaves us with a negative y because 3y squared times y, negative y, excuse me, is negative 3y cubed. And what is 3y squared divided by 3y squared? Well, that's just going to be 1. So this is factoring out the greatest common factor for each of these three terms. All right, so let's go back down to regular size. We won't do that anymore. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now factoring by grouping is simply straight up language, factoring by grouping. We're going to group terms and factor them separately from the other terms and leave them hanging, so to speak. So this one has all letters, so hopefully it doesn't freak you out. AX plus AY plus 6X plus 6Y. And so note that I can factor an A from these two terms, but not from these guys. Uh, but I can factor an a from those two terms. So if I do that, I'm going to get a times x plus y. And then over here, I can factor a 6 from these two guys. So if I factor a 6 away from that, I'm going to be left with this x plus y. Now, the reason why we'd want to learn how to do this sort of thing is exactly this. Note, note that this factor, so this is a term, and a, this is a factor and that is a factor. This number times this number gives us this whole number. Three times two gives us six. Three is a factor of six, two is a factor of six. So these two factors are, are factors of six. Um, I don't know why I felt compelled to really re review that idea, but uh, so A is a factor and X plus Y is a factor of this first term this is now a big giant term separated by this plus sign from this big term. Um, x plus y is a factor over here. So we can actually factor away x plus y and x plus y from both of these two terms, the green one and the blue one. So I, I'm le if I factor x plus y from both of those terms, I'm left with green plus a. Excuse me, not that. That's wrong. I'm left with, when I factor x plus y from these two terms, the green one and the blue one, I'm left with a plus, and then the blue term, 6. a plus 6 is left there. 
and so I get this binomial. So this binomial is, when I multiply these two binomials, I get this crazy thing up here, or at least that's a representation of it, all right? Uh, that's factoring by grouping. Now let's look at another example. Uh, m times p squared, mp squared, plus 7m, plus 3p squared, plus 21. Note the p squared and the p squared. And yeah, you could group those two terms and factor out a p squared, but in this particular case, it doesn't get us anywhere. And so why do we do math and why do we do problems and why do we do as many problems as we can? We create familiarity. So I can see what we're trying to do here. You may not, and that's okay. So pause and give it a couple tries. Give it one try and then come back and see what we do. All right. So we should be back. Um, I see that I have an M and an M in those two terms. I'm going to factor the M out of those two terms. So M, and I'm left with P squared plus 7. Ah, after I've done that, do you see the P squared and the 7 in those two guys? So if I factor away a positive M, oh, I'm the moron, not positive M, uh, positive 3, oops, positive 3, am I not left with P squared plus 7? And then, just like the problem before, I have this common factor and this common factor in these two larger terms. So if I factor away P squared plus 7, I'm left with, maybe I should have done that in blue, but whatever, M plus 3. Okay? So those two binomials result in that um, polynomial. And so one, another, just a final note, maybe it's not as long as I thought it was going to be, factoring is to, I shouldn't write that arrowhead, that means actually means something mathematically, is to distribution or distributing as dividing is to multiplying. Multiplying. Spell, Dana, spell. So factoring is to distribution as dividing is to multiplying. So you know distribution or distributing is uh, 3x plus 2. That's 3 times x plus 3 times 2. And that's multiplication. Factoring is division. Notice how when I removed or factored this m from that term, I divided this term by m and was left with the p squared. So factoring is, to, factoring is to distributing as dividing is to multiplication. That's the analogy. All right, that's it.